Hello and welcome back to your very own channel, Vigyan. This is the second part of JNU 2021 MSc Life Science Entrance Exam paper. We hope this video will boost your exam preparations. So let us move on to the first question that is, Mano 6 phosphate is used as a signal for targeting proteins to which of the following cellular organelles? Option A is lysosomes, B endoplasmic reticulum, C Golgi complex, and D peroxisomes. The Mano 6 phosphate receptor sort proteins into clithrin coated vesicles that are leaving the trans Golgi network and are destined for organelles called the lysosomes that are involved in breaking down the cellular waste products. The trafficking of majority of lysosomal enzymes to lysosome requires mannose-6-phosphate residue on their enzymes and linked sugar. The correct answer to this question is option number A, lysosomes. The next question is given below are two statements. Statement one, allosteric enzymes are regulated by covalent interactions with modulators. Statement two, for a typical allosteric enzyme regulation, the K.5 value are variable while half Vmax value remain constant. In light of the above statements, choose the correct answer from the given options below. Allosteric regulation means that an allosteric enzyme with allosteric sites in addition to active sites are regulated by the so-called modulators, though non-covalent binding to allosteric site of these enzymes. ATP and alanine act as allosteric inhibitors of pyruvate kinase. Allosteric enzymes do not show Michaelis Menten constant and show a S shaped sigmoid saturation curve as compared to the usual hyperbolic curve. For an allosteric enzyme, the substrate level of one half Vmax is called as the K.5 value. Now, in V system, the effect of inhibitor and activator changes the Vmax, but not the K.5. While in K type of allosteric enzyme, the substrate concentration that yields one half Vmax is altered by the presence of inhibitor or activator. Since the last statement has too many variabilities, hence this question was dropped. So, none of these options is actually correct. The next question is. The order of the given transcription factor recruited to promoter is, as you can see in this particular figure, TF2D, TF2B, TF2E, TF2H is the correct order for recruitment of transcription factor to the promoter. So the correct answer to this question is option number C. Next question is, which of the following statement is incorrect regarding Clino polymerase? A, it is a fragment of DNA polymerase 1. B, it has 5 prime to 3 prime polymerase activity. C, it has 5 prime to 3 prime exonuclease activity. And D, it cannot continue synthesis after nick is filled in. Clino fragment is a mesophilic DNA polymerase derived from E. coli polymerase 1, DNA dependent repair enzyme. The enzyme exhibits DNA synthesis and proofreading which is three prime to five prime nuclease activity. And in the absence of holoenzyme, which is five prime to three prime nuclease domain, displays a moderate strand displacement activity during DNA synthesis. So the correct answer to this question is option number C, five prime to three prime exonuclease activity. Your next question is match list one with list two. So here the total number of chromosomes in diploid cell is described as two N. So A matches with 2. 2N minus 1 is an example of monosomic condition. In this, an individual has one chromosome less than the normal somatic chromosome of the species. So B matches with 3. Presence of one chromosome in four copies is known as tetrasomy. 2N plus 2. So C matches with 4. And individuals that lack a pair of homologous chromosome are called as nullosomic. So here, D matches with 1. So the correct answer to this question is option number C. Let's move to the next question. Given below are two statements. Statement 1, in case of Drosophila, the ratio of X chromosome to autosome determines the sex of the fly. Statement 2, if X is to A ratio is 0.67, the fly will have intersex phenotype. In the light of the above statements, choose the correct answer from the options given below. According to the genetic balance theory of sex determination, the ratio of X chromosome 
to the number of set of autosomes determines the sex in Drosophila. In Drosophila, sex determination is achieved by a balance of female determinants on X chromosome and male determinants on the autosome. If the ratio of X chromosome to total number of set of autosomes, that is X upon A, falls between 1 to 0.5, the genotype will show an intersex phenotype. The X slash A value is 1 for normal female and 0.5 for normal male. So here, both statement 1 and 2 are correct. The next question is a plant with genotype AB, small capital A, small b, Capital, uh, capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital D, small d, capital F, small f, is crossed with a plant with genotype, capital A, small a, small b, small b, cap, small b, small d, and capital F, capital F. What proportion of progeny will have this given genotype? Capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital D, small d, and capital F, small f. So to solve this question, let's cross the individual genes along with their alleles. So when small a, capital A, small a is crossed with capital A, small a, it will yield a, a, comma 2 a, 2 of the capital A, small a, and two, one, just one of a, a. So the probability of having a capital A, small a genotype in this cross will be 2 by 4. Similarly, we have calculated for capital B, small b, cross, small b, small b, capital D, small d, cross, small d, small d, and capital F, small f, cross, capital F, capital F. And we have got the values of 2 by 4 in each of the conditions. So hence the proportion of progeny having capital A, small a, capital B, small b, capital D, small d, and capital F, small f genotype will be equal to 2 by 4 into 2 by 4 into 2 by 4 into 2 by 4, that will be 1 by 16. So the correct answer to this question is option number B. The next question is a biologist examined 200 cells of which 160 cells were in interphase, 20 cells were in prophase, 6 cells in prometaphase, 2 cells in metaphase, 7 cells in anaphase, and 5 cells in telophase. The cell cycle completes in 24 hours. The approximate duration of prometaphase is here out of 200 cells, 160 cells were in interphase, okay? 20 were in prophase, 6 in prometaphase, 2 metaphase, 7 anaphase, and 5 in telophase. So to calculate, to calculate the approximate duration of prometaphase, we can use the following formula. Number of cells in prometaphase upon total cells, is equal to duration of mitotic phase upon total duration. Or you can say 6 upon 200 is equal to duration of mitotic phase upon 24 into 60 minutes. The duration of the prometaphase hence will be calculated as 43.2 minutes. So from the given options, 43, which is option number C, is the correct answer. The next question is given below are two statements. Statement one, histones are small basic proteins. Statement two, both core and variant histones can be incorporated into DNA only in the S phase. In the light of the above statements, choose the correct answer from the options given below. Histones are small basic proteins that are core components of chromatin. Histones package and compact DNA by acting as spool around which the DNA can bind to create a structural unit which is called as the nucleosome. The synthesis and deposition of canonical histones in animals and plants are coupled to DNA synthesis, whereby canonical histone assemble into nucleosome behind the replication fork at the side of DNA repair. Most histones are synthesized at the S phase for rapid deposition behind the replication fork. By contrast, the incorporation of histone variants typically occur throughout the cell cycle and is independent of DNA synthesis. So statement one is correct, but statement two is incorrect. And the correct answer to this question is option number C. Our next question is, how many diploid genotypes are possible if a single locus has four alleles? Options are 10, 8, 16, and 12. At a single diploid locus, if there are 
n alleles in proportion to the sample, there'll be n bracket n plus one upon two different genotypes. However, the frequency of an allele in the population or sample is low. There may be no instance of some genotypes in the population. All of this assumes random mating and proper sampling and so on. The number of possible genotypes with four alleles is four bracket five upon two, that will be 10. So the correct answer to this question is option number A, 10. The next question is given below are two statements. Statement one, transition and transversion occur with equal frequency. Statement two, transversion arises at a apurinic site. The DNA substitution mutations are two types. Transition are interchange of two ring purines or one ring pyrimidine. They involve bases of similar shape. Transversion is an interchange of purine for pyrimidine base, which involves exchange of one ring or two ring structure. Although there are twice as many possible transversions because the molecular mechanisms by which they are generated, transition mutations are generated at a higher frequency than transversion. As well, transitions are less likely to result in amino acid substitution and are therefore more likely to persist as silent substitution in the population as single nucleotide polymorphism or what we call as SNPs. Depurination occurs due to hydrolysis of glycoside linkage, which results in an abasic site. The apurinic site generated are unnatural and thus are responsible for DNA damage. Studies done earlier have revealed the repair system leads to preferential insertion of adenine at the apurinic site. The result in this results in GC to TA transition. So here statement one is incorrect, but statement two is correct. So the correct answer to this question is option number D. Our next question is, which of the following statements is not true? A. X and Y chromosomes pair via pseudo-autosomal regions. B, synaptonymal complex help in joining the homologous chromosomes together. Homologous chromosomes pair via pairing centers in Drosophila. And pairing of homologous chromosomes is not essential for meiosis. Recombination is a prominent feature of meiosis in which it plays an important role in increasing the genetic diversity during inheritance. Pairing of homologous chromosome is an essential feature of meiosis, acting to promote the high level of recombinations and to ensure segregation of the homologues. So, option number D, pairing of homologous chromosomes is not essential for meiosis, is not true. So the correct answer to this question is option number D. The next question is match list one with list two. The, this question was also dropped and hence none of these is the correct answer. Let's move to the next question. The pentose phosphate pathway generates reducing equivalence and pentose for nucleotide biosynthesis. Which of the following proposed combinations is correct? The pentose phosphate pathway, PPP, branches after the first step of glycolysis and goes back to fructose 6-phosphate and glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in the glycolytic and glyconeogenic pathway. The PPP produces ribose 5-phosphate and NADPH for biosynthesis and redox regulation. The correct answer to this question is option number B, NADPH and ribose 5-phosphate. The next question is match the ligands in list 1 with the receptors in list 2. The insulin receptor is a transmembrane receptor that is activated by insulin, such as IGF-1, IGF-2. They belong to a large class of receptor tyrosine kinase. So A matches with 2. Interferon gamma, IFN gamma, is the cytokine that plays an important role in inducing and modulating an array of immune responses. Cellular responses to IFN gamma are mediated by its heterodimeric cell surface receptor, which activates the downstream signal transduction cascades, ultimately leading to regulation of gene expression. So B matches with one. 
Nuclear receptors are a family of ligand regulated transcription factors that are activated by steroid hormones such as testosterone, estrogen, progesterone, and various other lipid soluble signals, including retinoic acid, oxysterol, and thyroid hormones. So C matches with four. Transforming growth factor beta, TGF beta receptors are single pass serine threonine kinase receptors that belong to TGF beta receptor family. They exist in several different isoforms that can be homo or heterodimeric. So D matches with three. Here, the correct answer is option number C. The next question is given below are two statements. Statement one, crystal W uses progressive alignment for construction of multiple sequence alignment. Statement two, muscle uses an interactive approach for creating an initial alignment and then modifying to improve the alignment. For multiple sequence alignment, Cluster W uses progressive alignment method. In these, the most similar sequence, that is, those that with the best alignment score are aligned first. When progressively more distant group or sequences are aligned until a global alignment is obtained. Muscle, on the other hand, is a new MSA program that creates multiple alignment of protein sequences with improved accuracy and speed. This method combines iterative and progressive approaches to compute the suboptimal solutions, which is kept on modified intelligently using dynamic programming or other methods until the solution coverage. So both statement one and two are correct. And the correct answer to this question is option number A. The next question is highest efficiency or one-step purification of protein from a mixture is achieved by Options are ion exchange chromatography, gel filtration chromatography, ammonium sulfate purification, and affinity chromatography. Now, each pu protein purification step usually results in some degree of product loss. Therefore, an ideal protein purification strategy is one in which the highest level of purification is reached in the fewest step. Affinity chromatography is a single step purification method of separating the biochemical mixtures based on their highly specific binding interactions between an immobilized ligand and its binding partner. So the correct answer to this question is affinity chromatography. That is your option number D. The next question is you are synthesizing and randomized any one of having all four nucleotides in each position, oligonucleotides, having 10 bases, number of variants in the final product would be. So since we are synthesizing one random oligonucleotide having 10 bases, the number of variants in the final product can be calculated by 10 to the power 4, or it can also be written as 2 to the power 2 and 2 to the power 20. So from the given options, option number C is the correct answer. In the next question, in the following table, the left column has name of different metabolic pathways and right column has the name of metabolites. Identify the correct match of pathways and associated metabolites. The dihydroxyacetone phosphate or DHAP is converted into glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate in the fifth step of glycolysis, which is also known as Emden mayhoff parnas pathway, catalyzed by triose phosphate isomerase or the TPI. So A here matches with three. Fumarase or fumarate hydrate is known to participate in TCA cycle in the mitochondrial matrix that catalyzes the reversible hydration or dehydration of fumarate to malate. This transition step is required for production of energy in the form of NADP, sorry, NADH in the very next step. So B matches with one. Inside the mitochondrial matrix, fatty acid is metabolized by cleaving two carbon every cycle to form acetyl-CoA through beta oxidation process. So C matches with two. And the pentose phosphate pathway is a metabolic pathway parallel to glycolysis. And in the first reaction, glucose 6 phosphate 
oxidize into 6 phospho glucono delta lactone is present in the presence of glucose 6 phosphate dehydrogenase enzyme where nadph is produced as a by product in the second step now the 6 phospho glucono delta lactone is hydrolyzed by specific lactonases into 6 phospho gluconate so d matches with 4 The correct answer to this question is option number C. Our next question is: Which of the following enzymes is responsible for producing reactive oxygen species in a cell? Ascorbic peroxidase, glutathione reductase, catalase, or NADPH oxidase? in biological context reactive oxygen species are by product of normal metabolism of oxygen nadph oxidase or nox is a transmembrane enzyme that is located in the intracellular organelles and comprise several isoform this enzyme forms nox noxes are one of the major source of cellular reactive oxygen species and they still are the focus of extensive research interest due to their exclusive function in producing ros under normal physiological conditions so here the correct answer is option number d nadph oxidase in the next question we have to match list 1 with list 2 gyardia lambilla is a protozoan flagellate which is transmitted by fecal oral route and causes diarrheal illness which is called as gyardiasis or it's also commonly known as the beaver fever plasmodium falciparum is unicellular protozoan parasite that causes malaria in humans and amoeba histolytica are pathogenic amoeba which predominantly infect human and other primates causing amebiosis and leishmania donovani is a causative agent of leishmaniasis which is also known as the dum dum fever or the kala azar the most severe and often fatal form of leishmaniasis so the correct matches here are a matches with 4 b matches with 3 c matches with 2 and d matches with 1 and the correct answer is option number a next question is given below are two statements let's read out these statements first statement 1 Glutaraldehyde is used as a fixative in sample preparation for electron microscopy. Statement two: Glutaraldehyde cross links carbohydrates and lipids. In the light of the above statements, choose the correct answer from the options given below. Sample preparation for electron microscopy involves rapid fixation so as to maximize the preservation and minimize the cellular damage. Electron dense material like OSO4 is used for fixation especially fatty acids while glutaraldehyde is used for fixating the protein so the correct answer here is option number C given below are two statements given below are two statements statement 1 is autophagy involves active participation of lysosomes statement 2 an inherited disease called TS disease is used to the defect in lysosomal functioning in the light of the above statements choose the correct answer from the options given below autophagy is the major intracellular degradation system that derives its degenerative abilities from lysosome besides providing the means for degradation lysosomes are also involved in autophagy regulation and can become substrates of autophagy when damaged Tay-Sachs disease is a genetic disorder that results in destruction of the nerve cells in the brain and spinal cord due to mutated lysosomal beta hexaminidase encoding hexa G. This condition this condition is sometimes referred to as a lysosomal storage disorder during which the function of lysosomal enzymes are impaired and GM2 gangliosides are built up. So Both statement one and two are correct, and the correct answer to this question is option number A. In the next question, if a cell homogenate is subjected to repeated centrifugation with progressively high speed, 
what will be the order of precipitation of the following organelle. In this figure, you can see the nuclear nucleus part precipitates first, followed by mitochondria, lysosome, peroxisomes, then microsomes, ER fragments, and finally ribosomes and large macromolecules. The correct answer to this question is nuclei, mitochondria, microsomes, ribosomes. That is our option number B. The next question is, which of the following statements is not true for antibiotic gentamicin? In this figure, you can see different antibiotics and their functions. The gentamicin is listed under protein synthesis 30S inhibitors. Hence, it is a transcriptional inhibitor, that is option number C. In the next question, match list one with list two. Zygomonas mobilis is an ethanogenic bacterium that has been studied for use in biofuel production. It degrades sugar to pyruvate using the entern duodrop pathway, which later is fermented to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide as the only product. The analogous to human species produces H2CO2 acetate and butyrate during the initial growth phase in the acidogenic phase, resulting in decreased pH of the cultured medium. Cell metabolism then shifts to solvent production to form acetone and butanol in a solvatogenic phase. Cellulase is a natural enzyme produced by filamentous fungi, which promotes the endohydrolysis of 1,4-beta D-glucoside linkage in cellulose. And this particular fungi is trichoderma viridae. So the correct answer to this question is A matches with 1, B matches with 2, and C matches with 3. That is our option number A. The next question is given below are two statements. Statement one, auto-inducer used for firm sensing by gram-positive bacteria are freely diffusible across the cell. Statement two, acyl homocerine lactones are the auto-inducers used for quorum sensing by gram-negative bacteria. In the light of the above statements, choose the correct answer from the options given below. Acylated homocerine lactones are a class of important auto-inducer signaling molecules which are primarily used for numerous gram-negative species of bacteria for quorum sensing purpose. For synthesis of AHL synthase, AHLs can diffuse in and out of the cell by both passive and active transport mechanisms. Unlike the gram-negative bacteria, gram-positive bacteria generally use oligopeptides as auto-inducers for quorum sensing. These molecules are often synthesized as larger polypeptides that cleave post-translationally to produce processed peptide, which usually requires specialized transport mechanisms such as the ABC transporters. Additionally, they do not freely diffuse back into the cell, so bacteria that use them must have mechanisms to detect them in the extracellular environment. The correct answer to this question is option number D, statement one is incorrect, but statement two is correct. Our next question is forward scatter and flow cytometry is proportional to. Forward and side scatter light and fluorescence from stained cells are split into defined wavelength and channeled by a set of filters and mirrors within the flow cytometer. Forward scatter signal intensity is proportional to cell size. The bigger the cell, the more light is scattered and higher is the signal detected. So the correct answer to this question is option number C, size of the cell. The next question is given below are two statements. One is labeled as assertion, another reason. Assertion, lactose fermenting and lactose non-fermenting entering bacteria can be isolated with the use of Mac Cogni agar. Reason, neutral R is the medium that discriminates acid producers. Lactose fermenting colonies become pink as opposed to pale colonies for non-fermenting bacteria. Mac Cogni agar is used for isolation and identification of lactose fermenting and lactose non-fermenting enteric bacteria Lactose fermenting bacteria produce colonies that are varying shades of red owing to the conversion of neutral red indicator dye from the production of mixed acids. Colonies of non-lactose fermenting bacteria appear colorless or transparent. So both A and B are true and R is the correct explanation of A. So option number A is the correct answer.
The next question is CPG dinucleotide binds to this endosomal receptor and stimulates the MYD88 dependent MAP activation, MAP kinase activation. This receptor is on innate cells. Identify the receptor. As you can see in this figure, the MYD88 dependent MAP kinase activation may be stimulated by binding of CPG dinucleotide that binds to the endosomal TLR9 receptor. The correct answer question is option number B, TLR9. The next question here, here is, which of the following reagents would be required in a kit designed to detect coronavirus antibodies in patient sera using indirect ELISA? Primary antibody to coronavirus antigen, substrate enzyme label, secondary antibody to primary or antigen coated plates. Choose the correct answer from the options given below. From this figure, we can see that along with the patient sera, we need antigen coated plates, enzyme label secondary antibody to the primary and a substrate for color development. The correct answer here is option number C, B, C and D only. The next question is the late type hypersensitivity involves a sensitization phase and an effector phase. The process is mediated by dash, which requires representation of antigen by dash cells. The late hypersensitivity reaction, also called as the type 4 hypersensitivity reaction or the cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction, inflammatory reaction initiated by T lymphocytes and the antigen presenting cells, such as the macrophages and the dead right cells. That causes an inflammatory reaction to either exogenous or autoantigen, which takes more than 12 hours to develop. The late hypersensitivity reaction is accomplished by two phases, initial sensitization phase and later effector phase, leading to a tissue damage. So the correct answer to this question is option number D. T cells and antigen presenting cells. The next question is a mouse was immunized by antigen X. Two weeks later, the same animal was administered a formulation comprising of antigen X and antigen Y. State which of the following statements is true. Here, the correct answer is option number A, the magnitude and kinetics Option number D, the magnitude and kinetics of serum antibody response to antigen X and antigen Y will be different. And this is how we know it. The adaptive immunity is defined by two important characteristics, specificity and memory. Specificity refers to adaptive immune system's ability to target specific pathogens. refers to the ability to quickly respond to the pathogens to previously been exposed to. Specific and memory are achieved by essentially programming certain cells involved in immune response to respond rapidly to subsequent exposure of the pathogen. Now, this programming occurs as a result of the first exposure to pathogen or a vaccine, which triggers a primary response. Subsequent exposure results in a secondary response, which is much faster and stronger as a result of body's memory of the first exposure. And both magnitude and kinetics would be different for both X and Y antigen was because for X, you'll be seeing a secondary response, while for Y, you'll be seeing a primary response only. The next question is match the activities of B cell in the left column with possible mechanisms in the right column. Upon stimulation by antigen, cytokines or lipopolysaccharides, nine B cells drastically alter gene expression in order to become antibody secreting cells. RNA splicing is a key process which facilitates this transition. So A matches with two. During an immune response, B lymphocytes can switch expression of immunoglobins, Ig cells, from IgM to IgG, IgE, or IgA. This class switching is done at the DNA level and is known as class switch recombination or CSR. So B matches with three. 
VDJ recombination is a specialized DNA rearrangement used by the cells of immune system to assemble immunoglobins and T cell receptor genes from the pre-existing gene segment. Because there is a large choice of segments to join, this process accounts for much of the diversity of immune response. So C matches with one. The correct answer here is option number B. The next question is match the following. Agrobacterium tuminifacins is the causal agent of crown ball disease, the formation of tumors in over 140 different species of eudicots. Powdery mildew is a fungal disease that affects a wide range of plants and caused by many different species of fungi. The leaf curl disease is caused by a complex of white fly transmitted pegomovirus having monopartite genome with circular single-stranded DNA associated with satellite DNA molecules. Root knot nematode larva infects plant roots causing the development of root knot galls that drain the plant's photosynthate and nutrients. The correct matches here are A matches with three, B matches with four, C matches with one, and D matches with two. So the correct answer is option number D. Moving on to the next question, which of the following diseases is caused by Pseudomonas syringae. The bacterial speck disease just caused by Pseudomonas syringae in tomato is considered as, as a very important, economically important disease on tomato. So the correct answer to this question is bacterial speck on tomato, which is your option number A. The next question is which among the following is or are not present in a crocodilian heart? Now let us have a look at this figure of crocodilian heart. The term cardiac shunt donates blood flow that bypasses the lung or systemic circuit, thus representing an alternative path to the normal circulation. Cardiac shunt signifies affect significantly affects the blood oxygen level in systemic and pulmonary circulation and are defined by their direction as left to right or right to left. An RL shunt represents recirculation of systemic venous blood back into the systemic arterial circulation. Since this blood bypasses the lung, the shunted portion has no chance of being oxygenated. In contrast, an LR shunt represents the recirculation of pulmonary venous blood, which is oxygen rich to the pulmonary circulation. Now, unlike in turtle heart, a crocodilian heart lacks this LR shunt. Presence of other features are evolved to improvise the life of crocodile over land and in water. During stay over land, right ventricle pushes the blood into the pulmonary system for oxygenation, which later is collected and sent to the body circulation by the left ventricle. When crocodile is diving in the water for a longer time, then they do not send blood for oxygenation, rather through foramen of tenisa. It is sent to the systemic circulation via the LR shunt. During the right to left shunting, Blood is also ejected from the right ventricle into the left aorta, which continues to the gut as a seolic artery. The right and left aortas communicate with each other through foramen of penisa, located at the base just outside the bicuspid semilunar wall. The second point of communication between the two aortic arches exists in the abdomen via an anastomosis. So the frog heart has the RL shunt, the foramen of tenesa, and anastomosis. The correct answer to this question is option number A, the LR shunt. The next question is when radius of the resistance vessel increases, which of the following will also increase? There are several factors that determine the resistance to blood flow in a vessel. Now, these factors include viscosity, which is represented by new blood vessel length and blood vessel diameter, which is given by this particular formula. 
under normal physiological condition the vessel length and blood viscosity does not change drastically however the diameter of the vessel has dramatic effects and can be controlled by the autonomous nervous system if l is doubled r will be increased by two factors if n or the viscosity nu is doubled r will be increased by a factor of 2 if r or the vessel diameter is doubled the r will be decreased by a factor of 16 therefore it is no surprise that our body uses blood vessel diameter to control the resistance and ultimately the blood flow to our organs increased radius will result in decreased resistance to blood flow with decreased resistance capillary blood flow experiences an increased output so the correct answer to this question is option number d capillary blood flow the next question is in umbilical cord of mammalian embryo the following blood is maternal only is maternal and fetal blood is fetal only or proportion changes from maternal to fetal blood with development blood flowing in the mammalian umbilical cord is 100% fetal deoxygenated umbilical cord is an exception where arteries carry the deoxygenated blood and veins carry the oxygenated blood other exception is the pulmonary vein and pulmonary artery of course so the correct answer to this question is option number c fetal only okay this brings us to the end of this video if you like the content please do not forget to like and share the video and also tell your thoughts in the comment section and keep coming back for more such content